So our group, Hope Animal Assisted Crisis Response, long word, we oftentimes will say Hope AA for Animal Assisted, CR for Crisis Response. That sometimes isn't real clear to folks what it is we do. So we use another term. We say Hope Comfort Dogs. Now, that begins to unfold all sorts of images in one's mind when you do uh, work with an animal. We only work with canines, but when we're out in the field, that's in, in essence what we're providing is comfort to those in individuals who have been impacted by some kind of community disaster or some kind of crisis. First of all, our mission is to provide comfort and encouragement to individuals who have been impacted by a crisis or a disaster. And we do that through canine animal support. Each region operates independently. There's a, a regional director that leads the day-to-day -day kind of operations for each region. An area coordinator is someone underneath that person. That's what I am, that's my role. I'm a Montana area coordinator, which means I oversee the deployment of our teams throughout the state of Montana. So, some differences. And if you go across the chart with me on the screen, I won't read these to you. I'll try and just go through them quickly. But if you have any questions about them, these are general points. In a pet therapy situation, safety is rarely a concern. Whereas in a call-out, you have multiple teams. Depending on the number of people impacted, you'll have multiple teams. We rotate the teams every few hours if that's possible. Okay, so when you're going out where it said that the environments are stressful and there's heightened emotions, yeah, um, and that it can last for a long period of time and be stressful on the dog and the handler, do, so it's number three, call-outs mm -hmm. may be chaotic and unpredictable. Do you as the handlers need to go through specific training to know what triggers are of people you're working with or triggers in the environment yeah. so you can prepare yourself so you can assist your dog? Exactly. I'll talk a little bit about a story where in 2009, those of you who have been in Montana for a while, you'll remember both the Bozeman explosion in March of 2009 and two weeks later we had the private airplane crash in Butte where 14 people were killed and so in that example when Ellie and I worked that was our three-day call out and when we worked we were actually working with the National Transportation Safety Board folks and going to their meetings and hearing about the things that they were um, investigating in that crash so we as handlers had to be prepared to acknowledge what it was we were there for, what help we could offer, and in turn, we had to be okay with the information that was coming into us at the site, probable causes of death, number of children who were killed, number of parents who lost their lives, and then we ended up having to work with the families that, involved, uh, that were involved in this huge loss. I'll leave those up there for a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about socialization. I have an actual chart that I used when I was training Ellie. They need to be calm, focused on you, and or the people you're engaging with. They need to be able to recover nicely. You need to understand what rings their bells, rattles their chains. And one of the things with Ellie is, Anytime we are at a, um, like a 21 gun salute, we've been involved in that. And I've had Ellie go from a sound asleep and I just totally did not realize they were going to do that. And all of a sudden the first shots go off and it was just like a cat getting up, you know, it's like, ah! Diplomacy and working with folks, a positive attitude can't hurt. Being social, you like to be around people. Again, that notion of flexibility, and then being intuitive, grounded. But in 1998, they had one of the very first student-directed school shootings where students were killed and at least one teacher, 11th. 
2001. So Cindy is out in the state of Oregon, right, with her dogs and her hope pets. And then we have this East Coast disaster when the World Trade Center's towers went down, excuse me. And obviously, search and rescue dogs were well defined in being used. But here was a component of hope pets flying across the country in that airplane I told you about, getting there and working alongside of American Red Cross, bringing the dogs into family centers where they could work with folks that were coming in for daily respites. The dogs would work with folks. But remember, this is crisis work. This is unpredictable situations with stress and high emotions. Both of our organizations, National and HOPE, require that handlers are 18 years of age or older. National says your dog needs to be uh, one and a half years of age at least, having done at least a year's worth of therapy visits. Now, I'm not sure how you get that done when your dog is only a year and a half old. But that's their requirement. Ours is two years for the dog's age. And we don't have an age limit, but we talk to our, we call them hopefuls. If they want to become a HOPE member, they're hopefuls. And we talk to them a little bit about the investment that they're going to make in this training and do they want to do it when their dog is 11 or 12 years of age. Because their work life is rapidly coming to a close, their window of opportunities.